Hey y'all, hey. Welcome to another episode of Sweeteners You Can Use. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how we make our Swiss Marine Buttercream. First, I always start <laughs> using our handy daddy mixer. <laughs> this is the only size mixer that we have here in the shop, which is a 20 quart. Um, it plugs up into your standard 110 volt um, outlet. So for those of you who actually, you know, go through a lot of buttercream a week, it might be worth a good investment for you to buy one of these because they do plug up in your home. For those of you who are still working at home, they do plug up in your house in a standard 110 volt. So I'm gonna use this 20 quart mixer. This is a 20 quart bowl um, that comes with it. And I'm gonna use the whip attachment. I like using a whip attachment versus the flat beater attachment. Let me show you what the flat beater attachment looks like. This is the flat beater attachment. I prefer working with this whip attachment. And the reason being is because this attachment, it puts a little bit more air um, in your buttercream. That's how you get that smooth, fluffy, you know, buttercream soft, you know, like a whip texture. You know, so sometimes we get people that say, can I have whipped cream icing? And I'm like, we don't use whipped cream icing. We only use Swiss Marine buttercream. No, 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 the ice cream that you put on cupcakes, that's the whip icing. I said, no, I promise you it's buttercream. But this is why they think it's whipped icing because I use the whip attachment, which actually whips the buttercream, which puts a lot of air um, in your buttercream. You can use a flat attachment, but to me, um, I don't like using a flat attachment because it makes the buttercream thick. It makes the buttercream thick, and it to me is more you know difficult. It's more it's not as pliable as it is if you were to use the whip attachment. So that's why I use the whip attachment. Okay, and our buttercream calls for two quarts of egg whites. This is the base of your Swiss Marine buttercream. So the base of your Swiss Marine buttercream will be egg whites. And we use two quarts of that. Any pasteurized egg white um, that you want to use. You can use any pasteurized egg white. All right. And I tend to use salt um, in our buttercream, but we got salted butter. <laughs> I think my husband, you know, meant to pick up unsalted, but he picked up salted butter. So that's why, you know, I don't have to put salt in this particular recipe because the butter is already salted. So now that I got my egg whites in the bowl and I have my wire attachment in, I'm using a cake batter syrup. You guys can use any syrup that you want to flavor your buttercream. I tend to use cake batter because um, it tastes just like cake. Do I measure it? No, but I'm so used to pouring this in the bowl. I already know what one third cup, you know, kind of looks like. So <laughs> I kind of guesstimated, but don't try to stay home if this is your first time making this recipe. You want to use one third cup of syrup. So now I'm going to add the powdered sugar in. So here's where you want to put your powdered sugar in. Again, I don't measure anything because I've been making this buttercream for years. So I don't necessarily have to use the scale anymore when it comes to certain recipes, not all recipes, but when it comes to certain recipes, I don't even use the scale anymore because I already know what it, you know, what the weight looks like. So with our buttercream, we add 14 pounds of powder sugar. So that's what I'm adding here. This is the bowl that I use the same bowl over and over again. That's why it's covered in powder sugar. I go ahead and I put seven pounds in here. But again, you don't want to try this at home, especially if this is your first time, you know, making this recipe. We put 14 pounds of powdered sugar in our buttercream. So this is the first seven pounds. All right, and now I'm going to add the second seven pounds. This is the second seven pounds. And now that I got my 14 pounds of powdered sugar in, and as I mentioned, I didn't have to add any salt. But if you're using unsalted butter, you want to use three tablespoons of salt if you're using unsalted butter. That's for this recipe, the recipe that I'm showing you guys. And I'll also give you guys the measurements of what you need if you're making a smaller batch, uh, supposed to, you, I mean, if you're making a smaller batch, like if you're using a smaller mixer like your um, kitchen needs, which I believe they come like three quarts and five quarts like that. But I'll show you how to make a small batch. But if you're going through a lot of buttercream, like we go through a lot of buttercream, 
it's definitely worthwhile for you guys to invest in a 20 quart mixer. As I mentioned before, you can plug these up in your home. That way you're not making buttercream, you know, a bunch of batches of buttercream. You probably only have to make one, maybe two batches, but we have to make seven to nine batches a week. But you know, if you're working from home and you have to make buttercream, you probably only need to make one, maybe two batches of buttercream for the week. Versus you making <laughs> all of those batches with a smaller mixer. And now that I mixed that together, so what I did was I mixed the powdered sugar, the egg whites, and the cake batter syrup together, together until it was well blended. Now I'm gonna add the butter. And as you see, yes, is that much better. <laughs> that much better. As you see, is that much butter. <laughs> it's that much butter. Yes, we put 10 pounds of butter in each batch of our buttercream frosting. And I'm gonna open up each one of these butters. I'm gonna add it to the mixture, the egg white sugar mixture here in the bowl. Good morning, Cakes by Cynthia, can I help you? Yes, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. No, ma'am, we don't. I'm sorry. No vegan or uh, gluten-free. All right, thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Maybe it's probably worth introducing a vegan and a gluten option. Because we've been getting a lot of calls for those, you know, two types of things lately. You know. <laughs> no. As if we don't already have enough work to do. <laughs> And you'll notice that your mind will change a lot, you know, when, you know, when you're in your business, like you're get, you'll start getting inquiries for more things that, you know, that you don't carry, you know, that people kind of try to not talk you into carrying, but it kind of makes your mind think like if, when you start getting a lot of phone calls like that, should I start offering that? Should I start offering this? And then when you start offering it, you know, it's just sitting on your shelf got to try to refrain from being wasteful as much as possible. Like we was carrying grab and go cakes because we used to always have customers call and ask do we have any cakes that's, you know, that's ready to go. And we didn't and we started carrying them, you know, every, you know, now and then we would start carrying grab and go cakes. And they would start to come in and get them, but we noticed that it started, it started dying down. So, we was getting stuck with a lot of grab and go cakes that we had to throw out or that we had to slice up and sell in slices. So I said, that's one pivot that I'm not gonna do. <laughs> you know, it's off of, you know, grab and go cakes. Just wasn't worth it. We was throwing away more than we was actually selling. And you know, and when you're in a commercial space, you wanna try to save as many pennies as you can because the overhead can be insane. The overhead can really be insane. You gotta consider everything that has to be paid, you know, every month when you're wasting, you know, when you're wasting products. Yeah. So now that all the butter is in the mixer, I have it on low speed, just for a couple seconds until the butter blends. And now that that's blended, now we're gonna turn it up to two. And then you just let it run there. Let it run on two until it all comes together. It takes about maybe 10, 15 minutes but it also depends on the temperature in your room and it depends on the humidity in your room because I find that that affects our buttercream as well. Like sometimes our buttercream will whip up just like that in a matter of less than five minutes, it'll whip right up. But then other times it will take almost an hour, you know, for it to come together. And I noticed that when it does that, it's because the humidity that's in the room. So when it's humid in the room, it's gonna take forever to whip up. But if your butter is room temperature and the temperature is, I guess where it needs to be, it like comes together immediately. I don't know why it does that though. I can't even answer that for y'all. Cause I have no clue. I'm still trying to figure out why, why it does that. My best answer is it's the humidity in the damn room because that's when it seems like it always wanna act up. This one looks like it's gonna be coming together fairly quickly. 
And now we're just gonna let that whip a little bit until it's ready while I move into the next task. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm back in the area where y'all know me to stand at all the time in my videos, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this um, banana pudding while we wait on that buttercream. So our banana pudding is fairly simple too. So our banana pudding we use, we use banana cream, jello, instant pudding, and we use the cheesecake jello instant pudding. These are the two, the two main ingredients that's in our buttercream. I mean, and I, buttercream. These are the two main ingredients that's in our banana pudding, damn it. <laughs> So now I'm going to go ahead and add this um, Cool Whip. Let me get a glove. Y'all getting two tutorials in one. Ain't that something? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and add this Cool Whip into my Jello mixture. And the other ingredient, my favorite ingredient in banana pudding. I like cheesecake everything. So we're gonna add the cheesecake in here. Now I don't add the whole thing of cheesecake. I only add half of this cheesecake. So you just wanna do like so. Look like half of me. <laughs> so you go ahead and take half of that out and add it to your banana foot mixture. And you can save the other half for your next batch. And then you just take a wire whisk like I mentioned to y'all before, when making buttercream, whisk is the whisk attachments and the whisk whisk W H I S K. Damn it! <laughs> the whisk is what adds air into your um, like frostings and puddings, you know, and things like that. So if you want it more fluffy, then you want to use a whisk. If you want it more dense, then you use a pad. Me, I like fluffy, but I like my pound cake dips. So for the pound cake, yeah, you would use a flat um, paddle. But yeah, I like my cake and puddings fluffy, so that's why I use whisk. Okay, now I'm about banana. This is banana pudding. Lord, y'all got me tongue-tied because I'm trying to do two damn things at once. <laughs> So this is the banana pudding. The banana pudding is now done. We do our banana pudding different from a lot of your other bakeries. We like to put cake in the base of our banana pudding. And I'm gonna show you one real quick what it looks like. I will put one together for y'all and sample it for y'all, but it's not one o'clock yet and I'm still in the middle of my fast, so I'm not eating nothing. <laughs> I don't eat anything until after one. But this is what our banana puddings look like. As you see here, it's cake on the bottom. We basically just take one of our cupcakes, a vanilla cupcake or a snickerdoodle cupcake, and press down into the bottom, you know, of the container and then top it off with some banana pudding. Oh my God, delicious, delicious. This one is my favorite though. This is the strawberry banana pudding. This is basically our banana pudding, what I showed y'all that I made here with the strawberry cake on the bottom and some strawberry um, crumbs on top which is yum crumbs. These are the crumbs that we use on top of our strawberry, um, strawberry banana pudding. So now that this is done and it's all set, I can go ahead and have my daughter, she can package that up when she's ready. After she's finished setting up the front, she'll go ahead and package that banana pudding up so we can put it out front and then we can put the rest of it on the truck because the food truck goes out today too. So now, we're gonna go ahead and check on this buttercream and see how this one. Well, the buttercream isn't quite done yet, but it's definitely starting to come together. You'll know when it's starting to come together when you start seeing it, uh, where, it where it's going, it looks like, uh, what can I reference to? Um, cottage cheese. When it start curdling, you know, like milk does when it gets sour, that's like a weird analogy, but when it starts curdling, that's when you know that your buttercream is about to start coming together. What's going on? Oh, well, nothing for you. You said you brought food that you're allergic to, so okay. <laughs> I think it was just big pieces of salmon. I don't think it's little pieces of salmon. Well, so I can kind of like just pick around. Not Chipotle. I had Chipotle last night. Well, if you 
you turn it down, boy. I ain't gonna lie, last night it was great. So what restaurant open until midnight? Well, you can go ahead and get up. Well, I'm not going. Why? I'm going home. Because you going out. I didn't actually think it would do that this time because sometimes it does it sometimes it don't but sometimes I take precaution if this is what's going to happen and I'll put saran wrap around this hole you know around the whole front of the mixer but as you can see it's all done nice and fluffy this out the bowl tap it on the side of your bowl a little bit to get it off I remember I got suspended for this in high school <laughs> because commercial baking was my trade in high school and my teacher Mr. Nigliero she said don't you don't y'all bang that uh, whisk on the side of the bowl because it breaks the wires on it I just kept doing it one day and I broke one of the wires on it and I got suspended for it. <laughs> but this is my mixer so I can do what I want. Yep, now that that's done, and now we're gonna take our bucket. So now, good morning, Case my Cynthia, can I help you? Good, you yourself. What's the description of your order? Um, it's the, um, it's going to be like a signal day. Yeah, that ticket has 5 o'clock on it. It won't be done until 5. It's not even started on yet. Oh, that's fine, that's fine, that's Yeah. Fine. It's okay. Okay. All right, so, um, and what's the limit that comes in? We close at 6. Okay, all right. All right, thank okay. you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. 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 Customers 
Cause I always wanna pick up that cakes early on the day of. That ticket says five o'clock. That cake will be ready at five o'clock. It's only 12. <laughs> I don't know why cousins think that cake will be ready five hours early. Say, so I need those five hours to finish getting that done. Get all of that off the bowl. mess on the counter but that's okay ladies and gentlemen we now have swiss meringue buttercream nice fluffy sweet not too sweet but nice fluffy not too sweet swiss meringue buttercream thank you guys for watching bye